Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to look at how to do all of these different quantitative methods in Minitab and how to produce a bunch of the graphs that we looked at before. Okay, so we're working again with this high temperature data and we want to create stem and leaf plot. So here's the data if you want to play along. So over here in Minitab, I've got the data open. Okay, so to do a stem and leaf plot or any kind of graph for that matter, we go to the graph screen. We've got all of our options here. All right, so stem and leaf plot, pretty straightforward. In my graph variables box here, double click my variable. Now, if you have a certain way you want to increment your data in mind, you can put that here. This data is pretty pretty straightforward, so let's see what Minitab gives us by default. All right, there we go. So a couple things I want to point out about the Minitab output here. Okay, so this is, here are our stems. Here are our leaves. Okay, but in this column, okay, we see some numbers. So what, what are these numbers here? Well, maybe you notice that there are three leaves in this first stem. There we've got a three. Okay, so going down to this 11, well, what is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, there's not 11 leaves here, so what is that? Well, if you count these, there's 8 leaves. 8 plus 3 is 11. One leaf here, two leaves here, 1 plus 2, 3. Must be 7 here, 1 plus 2 plus 7, 10. So we see what these numbers are keeping track of are cumulative frequencies going from either end. So what this tells us, where we see 16 in parentheses, that means the middle of our data set is right there somewhere. Okay, so Minitab, and, and as far as I know this is exclusive to Minitab, it gives you these cumulative frequencies which make it easy to count with. Okay, so something kind of cool about Minitab. So let's keep working with this same data set. Now let's make a dot plot. Okay, so when I go to graph, dot plot, I'm just going to do a simple one, double click my data in there, and here we go, there's our dot plot. Now, so with our stem and leaf plot, with our dot plot, we haven't had to play around with any of the settings, these things are pretty straightforward for the most part. All right, we've Some kind of cool things we can do, we can hover over certain observations, and Minitab will tell us a little bit more about that observation. All right, so there's our stem and leaf plot. Here's our dot plot. Next thing we want to look at is how to make a histogram. Okay, so when I go to graph, histogram, again, we'll just do a simple histogram, double click my variable in, and let's see what Minitab gives us by default. Okay, so here's the default histogram that we get. And I've seen a couple couple issues here, a couple things that, that I'd like to clean up. All right, first of all, we've got a gap in our data, which is something that we don't typically want. Now, maybe it's something we can't avoid if we have an extreme value, which maybe this is, but generally we don't want gaps. We probably have too many bars here, right? Because we know, all right, there's 50 states. We know a good starting point is the square root of our number of observations. So the square root of 50 is about 7. This is more than 7 bars here. So why is it doing that? Well, I think what's going on here is, if you'll notice, I have kind of a, uh, a different version of this data set than what I uploaded, because this version of the data set has the city where each, each um, high temperature was recorded. And sometimes, like in, for example, Colorado here, 114 degrees was recorded twice. Okay, so it's got a, and, and Minitab is reading this as a missing value. So I think it was probably basing its number of classes with the missing values in there. So to change your number of bins, I can double click on the bars of my histogram and go to this binning tab. Okay, one thing I like to do is instead of using the class midpoints, I like to use the cut points. Okay, so that's one nice thing. And you have two options to tell Minitab how to bend things. Now it started with 10. We think that 7 would be a good place to start. 
Now maybe Minitab is smart enough to realize, okay, seven bins of five, I think is what we use. Minitab may be smart enough to realize that, but if you have in mind where you want it to start, you can put in, okay, I want it to start at one third. I want it to start at 100, then go to 105, then go to 110, and so on. Minitab will pick up that pattern and it'll give you a nice result. So I think this result here is a little bit nicer than our default option just because of how Minitab was reading in that data. Okay, so there's our histogram of that data. Now let's look at making a line graph. So remember we can't actually make a line graph of this kind of data. It's not in a good format for that. We've got our other data set open now and it's in the form of a frequency table. This is the one about students and the number of movies they watched in the last week. Alright, so here I'm going to go to graph line plot. And now remember the, the directions that I'm giving here are when we have our data in this certain form, in frequency form. Okay, so if I have my data in a frequency table, I'm going to go to this series in rows or columns. Okay, for my graph variable, I'm going to choose where my frequency, the column that my frequencies are in. So that column happens to be called frequency. My label column will have the labels that go along my x-axis. All right, and I'm going to click this option. Each column forms a series. So let's see what it gives us here. Right, and there is my line plot of this simple frequency table data. Now if you had a, a group of ordinal data summed up in a frequency table, you could do it the same way. If you had raw ordinal data, right, you'd have to go through a few more steps. You would choose you know, something like 1y and then sort that out from there. Right, but this is how we do it when we have our data in a frequency table. Now I'm going to go back to our high temperature data and I'm going to paste in this frequency table that we made previously. Alright, so we had all these classes that we used good binning techniques to make and we have our frequencies here. All right, we have cumulative frequency, relative frequency, rel cumulative relative frequency. We don't need all these right now. We're just going to use this frequency row and the classes to make a frequency polygon. Now frequency polygon is basically just a line chart of frequency data. This happens to be continuous data that we put into a frequency table. Alright, so I'm going to go to graph, line plot, same idea that I did before, series in columns or rows. My graph variable here is the frequency. My label column is class. Each column forms a series. Let's see what that gives us. So here's our line plot, which mirrors pretty well this, this histogram. If you kind of put a dot at each class midpoint and you drew a line through it, right, that's basically what your, your frequency polygon would look because we're using the same classes here as we did for our histogram. Okay, so for this data set, we made a stem and leaf plot, we made a dot plot, we made a histogram, we made a line plot, all of the same data. And we talked about in, the pre in a previous video kind of the pros and cons of each of these methods, what they highlight, and uh, what some of them might miss, what some of them might do better. All right, so next we're going to look at our last kind of simple plot we might make, a time series plot. Okay, so this is now we're going to need data that has a time aspect to it. Okay, so here we have data on seal pups born on an island in Alaska over a span of a few years. And we want to kind of see what's going on with these births over time. So here is our data. Okay, so I'm going to look at the data over here in Minitab. And the structure of our data, right, we have a column for years. We also have a column for the observation for each year. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Okay, so if I go here, of course, to graph, 
time series plot. I'm going to choose just a simple plot here. Okay. And all right, so what I'm going to want to click into series here is my variable of interest. This happens to be pups born. All right, now here's where I have choices based on the structure of my data. Okay, so you can click on this time scale button and I can do a couple things here. We're, this is nice because we have the years in a column here so I can tell it to stamp it with this year column. Okay, so that's one way I can do it and let's see what it gives us. Alright, it gives us a nice a nice plot here. We see it trending down over time. There's some sort of cyclical pattern trending down over time and we're, we're losing our cyclical pattern. And we've got the year along the x-axis. Now the other way we can do it, say I didn't have this column of years. What if all I had was just the observations? And I knew the observations ran in years that started in 1975 and went to 2006. Well, I could go to graph, time series plot, simple again, click my variable in there, but in time scale, I don't have this year column to stamp it with anymore. I can say, okay, let me go to calendar, year, and it started in 1975. So now Minitab is going to increment this by year from 1975, starting in 1975 by year for all of our data points. And it's going to give us the exact same looking graph. Okay, so that's how to make all these kind of simple graphs that we're interested in for quantitative data in Minitab. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.